Okay, guys, I'm whispering because I'm in the Brampton Public Library, and I'm less of a maker and more of a breaker, but we're going to check out an open-to-the-public drop-in 3D printing space at the Brampton Public Library in conjunction with the city of Brampton and Sheridan College. So this is going to be cool and possibly have a lot of funny fumes, but let's check it out. I've worked in Municipal for 15 years. This is one of the most exciting projects I've ever worked on. What brought the City of Brampton to the table on this project? The city came to the table when we sort of realized that if a lot of the job growth was going to come from the creative economy, that the city needed to be a partner in doing things that brought kind of the creative community together. So what were going to be the opportunities for collaboration and inspiration and peer-to-peer -peer learning? Um, and we had some established relationships already with the Brampton Library and Sheridan College. It was just looking at different ways to work together. So Josh here has printed a Canon lens adapter or a lens cap. What exactly is this piece, Josh? This is a hood for a, uh, for a Canon digital SLR. What's the standard time it takes to complete a project of, you know, base complexity? Mine took about this, just took about an hour. That took an hour? An hour. How the guy over there, he's got, he has a Yoda. Mm -hmm. I think about an hour and a half. This is Dimension 1200. This is a professional series machine. This machine new costs about $25,000. The new version of this machine, the Fortis 250, costs closer to $30,000. What are the benefits in technical terms of using a machine like this versus the little consumer grade $1,000 jobby? Uh, one, uh, one of the advantages with this, I can print much finer detail than the MakerBot can. What's been the most surprising thing having using 3D printing technology? What was the thing that you didn't expect to find going into it? Oh, like people can print like cars and, and like everything. I'm like, what the? Because uh, Ryan was saying they can print anything. The other guy is printing a print. They're one of his classmates is actually going to print a 3D printer. If uh, somebody comes into this cold, about how long does it take them to be making their first project and having success? Uh, we can get somebody making their first project within a couple hours. Like we get them set up um, on a browser-based account so they can use it here or they can design at home and we kind of show them the very basic um, elements of the 3D printer and they're printing pretty quickly. <laughs> kind of smells. There's all these horror stories about, and they said, absolutely not with this, maybe this machine, but people making guns, people making weapons, things like that. I am skeptical about this because of the high heat point of, of gunpowder. Could you make a fireable gun on this machine? I have read up on this. It is actually illegal to have the files for it now. Even if you get the, even if you can make it, which this machine can do it. If you have a single problem with the fit, with the filament, if you've had a bad batch of filament, if you've had an, a print error in your print, the thing will just explode the moment you pull the trigger. So really, the creative economy and those who work in it are people who are paid to think. So it's not um, just sort of the traditional arts and culture that people associate with creative economy, but it's also designers and engineers and architects and other people that design and create and 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 think about problem solving, innovation, all of those things sort of fall. Creative economy is really an umbrella sort of name for all of those people that create. Libraries are traditionally about books, but we're also about literacy. So um, part of my part is to ensure that our customers are up to date with digital literacy as well. What we really want to do is create sort of a, a barrier-free, accessible opportunity for everybody to get hands-on with technology and have access to expertise. That's why it's so important that Sheridan College is here because it's a true learning environment. This is a real educational opportunity for people, no matter where they're coming from or, or where their interests lie. What are the practical applications of high-end 3D printing? Using 3D printing, I can make my I can make custom pieces. I actually just fin I'm actually putting the finished touches on making a custom computer, where I'm actually I actually made a tower combined into a roller case, so I can bring this higher end gaming PC with me whenever my friends have LAN parties, whenever I have higher end CAD. You made R2D2. Yeah, uh, pretty much. <laughs>